It's a great pleasure for me to introduce this short video on our new look stadium. I'm sure that everyone who comes here will appreciate our two new stands and the facilities it now gives our fans. It would be remiss of me at this time not to say thank you to everyone who's been involved with the project, Clive Alt, Mike King, Eric O'Neill and all the companies who have put a lot of work into this magnificent, magnificent um, stadium. The fans, I am sure, will appreciate the new facilities that they have now and I hope that we can match this on the field and that this year, at the end of the season, we are celebrating promotion to the First Division. Keep shouting for us, enjoy the facilities and thank you. Situated in the heart of Burnley, Turf Moor, the home of Burnley Football Club. During December 1994, the decision to take Burnley Football Club Stadium into the 21st century was taken. Tenders for the work were circulated. In July 1995, Lin Pei of a Lincolnshire-based construction company specialising in sports stadium development were chosen to carry out the work. On Saturday, September the 16th, 1995, the directors and supporters of Burnley Football Club said their last farewells to the long side. Hull City were the visiting team. The attendance was 10,613, the highest gate in the second division. This decision carries on the great tradition of Burnley Football Club's ambition to relive the glory days seen at Turf Moor. The last major development at Turf Moor was the construction of the famous Bob Lord Stand. This was officially opened on Saturday, September the 14th, 1974, by the then leader of Her Majesty's Opposition, the Right Honourable Edward Heath MP. On this occasion, Leeds United were the visitors. The Burnley manager was Jimmy Adamson, who later went on to manage Leeds United. Burnley went on to win 2-1 in front of a crowd of 25,000 people. Look at the league table at this time. No Manchester United. They were relegated to the second division in the previous season. How times change. On September the 18th, 1995, the demolition of the long side begins.
As the phoenix grew from the ashes, so too does the north stand from the old long side. The heaviest piece of steel weighed 5.5 tons. To lift this, a 50 ton crane was used. Thirty-seven thousand nuts and bolts hold this construction tightly together. On the 16th of January 1996, the sad news of the death of Harry Potts, the former and some would say the most successful manager at Burnley Football Club, reached Turf Moor. Harry was 75 years old, born on the 22nd of October 1920. Even the heavy snowfall could not deter the ongoing work. Arthur Bellamy and his dedicated ground staff confirmed that the show must go on, or should we say, the snow must come off.
On the 12th of February 1996, Jimmy Mullen, the Burnley manager, left Turf Moor by mutual agreement. Jimmy Mullen was succeeded by the club's first ever player manager, Adrian Heath, on the 7th of March 1996. The stands at their highest point stretch 28.5 metres high, making Turf Moor easily visible from the surrounding areas. When completed, the capacity in the North Stand will be just under 9,000 people. The East Stand, just over 6,000 making the total ground capacity at Turf Moor 22,500 people at a cost of approximately £5.3 million. The scheduled opening of the new North Stand was to be the 23rd of April for the visit of Bristol Rovers. Will the stand be ready? The demolition of the Beehole Terraces had already begun. The new North Stand had already been spotted by the local fire brigade for specialised rescue technique training. <laughs> Next to go are the floodlights soon to be replaced by the very latest in lighting technology.
ground is now taking shape and as the new season gets underway there is great anticipation of being able to taste the new facilities. Hopefully the legendary Longside Chance will soon return to Turf Moor. The stadium is now complete for the visit of Blackpool on Tuesday, September the 10th, 1996, a kick-off time of 7.45 p.m. I really do, yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's really good. Give it a try, what else can I say? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's just brilliant. Like, how, uh, how you can see the pitch from. Uh, you, like, no one gets in your way or anything. It's just brilliant. It's just standing in the enclosure. It's just standing in the enclosure. It's about 18 pence. And it was in Bob Lord's day. It was, um, you know, the team that went to Wembley. And, uh, Yes. Changed a bit since then. No, it's changed a lot, but uh, so's the football. Yes. I don't know whether it's more into. I've never seen this before. Right? Half an hour before time. No, no. Yet I, I can remember three players. You'd have to get out the pub at this time. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really good, Emmy. It's, it's really creates a good new atmosphere at Burnley. I think um, the crowds will come back because it so things are really smart. Yeah, the best thing that could ever happen to this club, I reckon, something like this. Yeah. I think it's low work. It's smashing. Better than expected. Well, here we are with Turf Moor nearly completed. Uh, I say nearly, there's a little bit of snagging to do. But the magnificent redeveloped Turf Moor is now open. It's taken the directors and myself some five years to, to complete and half a dozen different schemes and different ideas, um, various modifications. It goes back to 91, Lord Justice Taylor's report and the disaster at Hillsborough. But obviously some good has come out of Hillsborough and we here at Turf Moor see the result, something that I'm personally very proud of and I hope all the Burnley fans are very proud of. This is obviously the end of phase one and two. We've still got an important third phase to complete which is based on the gymnasium, which is community facilities for football in the community. Uh, it's going to be worked in conjunction with Burnley Borough Council and the local health trust. It's for residents and it's for our fans uh, on the theme of Burnley has the fittest fans in the land. Now whether we can get you all along uh, an exercise there, we shall have to wait and see. But the gymnasium is going to be converted with some dressing rooms, a uh, creche, uh, a fitness centre, uh, a sports injury clinic and a small restaurant and bar area and I think that that will make Turf Moor uh, a very special place to come. Well the ground then was uh, uh, what, what is now the uh, North Stand was the uh, long side. There was only about four concrete steps right across which actually uh, had been built by the young, young apprentices at that time. Um, such like as our old mother, Harry Potts and them, uh, actually built those uh, first lot of terraces. Then, uh, of course, contractors came in later on and built and uh, built um, concrete terracing right across. Uh, the stand was uh, a covered 
terrace, a, a stand was erected in roughly about 1950. The cricket field stand in 1947 comprised of railway sleepers. Uh, and of course, later on, um, approximately, I think it was 1969, we built the cricket field uh, stand as it uh, now is the Ensley stand. The uh, Brunchy Road, which is the Bob Lloyd stand now, was um, was actually uh, a cover called the Bruncher Rope Stand. It comprised of about 3,500 seats with an enclosure at the front um, holding about 6,000 people standing, which meant on that side you could have roughly 9,500 people, whereas today, with being all seated, the Bob Lloyd Stand holds under just about 3,000. The Viol End was only partly terraced. Later on, the, the terracing was extended by means of uh, girders and um, concrete uh, plants. We, we could, uh, the maximum attendance in those days was roughly 52,000. And uh, we, 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 uh, that was for night matches, 54,000 for day matches. The record attendance at, at all time at uh, Turf Moor was 54,700, round about 1928. And we did in fact have attendances. The record league attendance uh, against Blackpool was about 53,000 and odd. And you could actually empty this ground in 10 minutes or so, because people could, had access to all the exit gates all around the ground. There was no segregation. Uh, present day, of course, we've got now what must be rated one of the best stadiums in the country. An all-seater stadium with excellent facilities. There's no question about it. It is looking really great now. Have you ever felt when you were offered the player manager job at Burnley Football Club? Obviously, I was delighted to be offered the job. Um, I think from the moment I came to the club, I think it was about four and a half years ago now as a player, um, it's gone really well for me. I've enjoyed every minute of it as a player and had a, a good rapport with the supporters and I think they were instrumental in getting me back here. Um, I think a few people said to me at the time they thought I was just an, an ageing pro coming here to earn his last few days of wages and see his time out, but I've never been like that. I've always given everything I've got and I think they, they appreciated that. And as I say, I think they were instrumental in me coming back here to be the manager. Um, it would have been ideal for me perhaps to have been another couple of years with Howard Kendall over at Sheffield United, but that wasn't to be. You don't get the opportunity to manage a football club like this very often, and um, I couldn't turn it down, really. Now that we've got the stadium complete, how do you think it's had an effect on you and the team? Well, certainly from my point of view, I, I feel feel proud to be the manager and, and, and love every time I come out and see the two beautiful new stands. and. Uh, it's, we've got the equal of anything in our division and, and the better than most in the first and although the Bob Lord's quite an old stand in terms of age it's the amenities in there and the, everything that you, you'd like to think with the off the field activities is first class so uh, we've got an excellent ground now I think from, from my own personal point of view now it's nice sending the team out with four start sides on the ground last year when we weren't a particularly good side we were very short and low on confidence and only playing to two or three sides, it made it a little bit even extra difficult. But it's nice now to run out of here every week, and uh, I'm just sorry I'm not a player running out in front of it every week because uh, it looks superb now when you come running out the tunnel and you see the two big new stands, and uh, we've just got to make sure now that we, we keep progressing. What for the future of Burnley Football Club? What do you think, where do you think you're going? Well, I'd like to think that in, I think I said at my press conference, in five years' time we'll be in the Premier Division, and I saw a few raised eyebrows at that, but... I think what I meant more than anything was the fact that the manager's role these days is so precarious. I think 18 months is, is the, the average uh, life expectancy now, shall we say. So if I'm still here in five, five years' time, we'll have made good progress. And that'll either be by being in the Premier League or certainly being towards the top end of the first division. From my own personal point of view, I'd like to think we could do that. But I want to make sure that we're, we're strong all, all the way through the club, not just at first team level. I think we're a little bit weak in certain areas of the club and we've in the, in the process at the moment of redeveloping, if you like, the, the youth system and the school of excellence and I'd like to think that in a few years' time we'll be strong in all divisions 
from the nines and ten years upwards to the first team. And if we are, if and when I'm either still the manager or I move on, I'll, I can take a great deal of satisfaction to think that the club's in a far better, healthier state than was when I came. Excellent. Thanks very much, Adrian. Cheers. Thanks very much.